Um, today, we're going to be talking about kinship caregivers and library system, um, and I'm going to kick it off with our standard introduction. Um, just to let everybody know, everyone is on mute for the duration of the webinar. If you have questions, please feel free to drop them in the chat, and we will answer them live if we can or at the end. Um, and this will be available on the Kinship Navigator's YouTube channel right after this presentation. We will also send out the PowerPoint and the YouTube link to everyone that participated today. So just a little background about our Lunch and Learn series. If you've been with us for any length of time, this is familiar to you. If you're just joining us brand new, uh, the good news is they're all viewable on our YouTube page. Um, these Lunch and Learn series are sponsored by the New York State King Care Coalition, New York State Kinship Navigator, the 30 minute duration webinars uh, meant for professionals and kinship caregivers for things that might be of interest to kinship caregivers. In the past, we've done what to expect at family court, an overview of education issues, dispute resolution, Cornell cooperatives, respite, uh, quite a number of things. This is just a snapshot. Um, next month, we will be joined by Mahaney's, which is Mental Health Association of New York State, to have a little bit of conversation about what they can offer for kinship caregivers. So that is November 17th at 12 p.m. Mark your calendars. We'll send out an invitation right after this webinar today. As pretty much everybody on the call, I'm sure, knows, uh, I am Ray Glazer. I'm the director of the New York State Kinship Navigator Program, the chair of the New York State Kin Care Coalition. I'm just going to take a couple of minutes to talk a little bit about what the Navigator can do for kinship caregivers, kinship professionals, and prospective kinship caregivers. Um, basically, the Navigator is meant to be information referral and education for all of those people all across New York State. Um, so we have a helpline that we run Monday through Friday at uh, 10 to 4. We have a website, www.nysnavigator.org. Um, we have access to the Navigator via email, via online chat, and our whole purpose is to make sure that we can connect caregivers to resources in their area, give them information on common kinship caregiving issues like access to financial assistance and information on legal advocacy. And we work with all local kinship programs, the permanency resource centers, local departments of social services to make sure that kinship caregivers are connected to services in their area. As you can see, this is a breakdown really of what our services do. Um, on our website, we've got legal fact sheets for kinship caregivers, over 50 cited legal fact sheets that cover um, basically everything that a kinship caregiver might need, information on financial assistance, the different legal options, enrolling a child into school, uh, changing a child's name, getting official documents, you name it, it's there. Um, we've got county resources, so we have a map that you can type in your county and the type of resource you're looking for. It'll bring up what's available in your area. The helpline, as I discussed, um, we provide education to professionals and to kinship caregivers, statewide presentations um, like this one, uh, and also Kinship 101 financial assistance legal options uh, to human services professionals. We have an online video archive that has all of these webinars, but also has our common PowerPoints like 101 and financial assistance, legal assistance, King Gap, right on our website. Um, and then we provide leadership for the King Care Coalition, um, where we come together with anybody that's got a vested interest in kinship care uh, to discuss best practices for programming, to discuss policy initiatives, and to educate legislators on the importance of kinship care. Uh, the King Care Coalition does meet monthly. Our next monthly meeting is November 15th at 12 p.m. Right on the Navigator's website is information about how to sign up for that. So um, we spent a lot of time talking about program best practices the last couple of months. We are now moving into 2023 policy season. So if you've got an interest in that, uh, we encourage you to sign up, join us. You don't need any special skills except for an interest and a passion for kinship care. Here's a brief snapshot of the, web, the Navigator's website. As you can see, a lot of the things that I've discussed um, our legal resources have our legal fact sheet. Here's our clickable map where you can put in your county and your service. Um, the Navigator's helpline information is down below. It's cut off a little bit. You can see our online chat. Um, any business days between 10 to 4 p.m. If you let it chat with the Navigator instead of call, you can absolutely do that. 
And here, this always needs to be updated uh, for next month, but these buttons right here on the home page have information on our latest training. So if you go to what our uh, website currently looks like, you will see the sign up for the coalition. Starting tomorrow, you'll see the sign up for next month's lunch and learn. The last component I want to talk about is something that we kicked off in 2019. That is our virtual case management program. And that's meant to bridge the gap between the counties that currently have a local kinship program and the counties that don't. So in the 62 counties of New York State right now, there are 14 local kinship programs that serve 25 counties. They can serve kinship caregivers that have no formal legal designation or legal custody. Um, and then the permanency resource centers that service all the counties can serve post guardianship and post adoptive families. The navigator serves the entire state, um, but we're starting to bridge the gap in those 37 counties that don't have an on site kinship program that can service the majority of kinship caregivers. So we do have three people on our team right now that are virtual case managers. And if you reside in any of these counties that are right on the screen or you have a caregiver that does, they call the helpline. We will enroll them in our virtual case management. They don't have to do anything special. Just let us know what county they're from. And our virtual case managers will work with them for up to six months to help them with facilitated benefits application, facilitated referrals, um, and basically follow them. Uh, not in person. It is done virtually, but it's meant to be more than a one-time call to our helpline. So they will work with that client for up to six months at a time to make sure that they are able to get the services that they need. The last thing I've got to say is if you're a professional and you're looking to get clients in touch with us, you can always give them our phone number. Um, but if they're going through a lot, they might not give us a call. Uh, we encourage you as the professional to download our permission to contact form. Um, it's just a two page form. The front explains the navigator services. The back asks the caregiver to sign off and give us permission to call them. And we will reach right out within two business days and contact that caregiver. So it's a little bit easier for that caregiver where we make that phone call and take the onus off of them. And we're happy to provide an intake and uh, whatever services we can for that family. So without further hesitation, I'm going to turn it over for the main portion of our program today. Um, Heather Olson, who is a Family and Consumer Education Program Financial Literacy Educator, say that five times fast. Uh, she's joined us from Cornell Cooperative Extension to talk a little bit about kinship caregivers and the library system. So Heather, thank you for joining us. I'm going to turn it right over to you uh, to talk a little bit about the library system. Okay, <clears throat> at least I can unmute myself. I, my camera does not seem to be working, but um, uh, someone's already disclosing that they owe to the library. That's oh, I'm not here to to stir up guilt. Um, I can absolutely discuss um, any sort of monies owed to the libraries. Um, each library treats it a little differently, but okay. Thanks for the opportunity to discuss one of my favorite pastimes serving on the library board. I didn't give him any money to discuss that. Mark, absolutely. You can participate in this discussion. This is more information. So I'm going to let Heather go ahead and start sharing. Uh -huh. Oh, Go right ahead, Heather. This is a free lunch and learn. So um, yeah, it, it's not letting me turn my camera on, but um, I'm Heather Olson. Like uh, Ray said, I work for Cornell Cooperative Extension in Dutchess County doing uh, family and consumer education. Uh, in addition to financial literacy, I also assist with our RAP program and I do marketing and communication. In my spare time, though, my volunteer time, I also serve as president of the Friends of the Kingston Library Group located in Ulster County in the Hudson Valley region of New York State. Friends groups are part of almost every library system within the New York State. Uh, their goal um, as 501c3s is to support and enhance the services and resources each library provides to the, their community. They also advocate for resources and they fundraise. I inherited that and also served as Kingston Library Board President for almost six years within Ulster County. I do work in Dutchess. Uh, if you want to, let's see. So within the chat as we get started, I'm curious. Um, why don't you, if you would be so kind, uh, share your first or favorite memory of your library experience? I'd love to see the diversity. 
New York State Libraries are all part of the NILA, New York State Library Association system, and it's affiliated with the American Library Association, and um, they serve as the New York State chapter of that national body. Members of, fill the chat, <clears throat> members of the state association include librarians, both public um, system, school-wide, collegiate, and also university level, and many other um, special libraries, library trustees, uh, friends of the libraries like myself. From a membership of 43 back in 1890, the association has grown to a vital organization of several thousand members. I love it. I love it. I'll, I'm going to point out some of these comments in a moment. Um, so it's representing not only libraries of New York State, but also including many other members, state and institutional from all over the United States. NILA has always been devoted to the promotion of the library interests uh, around the entire state, and it has, to its credit, uh, contributed to notable systems and moderniza modernization of libraries throughout New York. Uh, it's committed to these guiding principles. NILA advocates for New York library communities, uh, for the excellence within those libraries, and also to enhance member engagement. All right, so just a brief, um, we're all looking at the chat, um, besides owing oh, a couple of bucks to the library. Uh, first job was a computer page pre-internet at a library. Uh, our librarians were always some of the nicest people. That's true, they have to. It's part of the job description to be some of the nicest people. Getting my library card when I was nine, I felt so grown up. I actually, um, we had someone come in at 60 to get their first library card and they were just as excited. Story time and crafts for kids. I'm gonna actually come back to that. My family would go to the Kingston Library weekly my library and read as a family every night. We attended the craft events. Ugh. I'm so glad to see someone from my neck of the woods. That's awesome. So I mean, we're seeing a little bit of diversity and uh, within how people use their libraries. You know, it's funny, Heather, I gotta say, I have my own memories of when I was a kid and I was six when I got my first card and you had to be able to sign your own name to get your library card. So that was a very big deal to me. Agreed. Um, but now that I'm an adult, um, I love bringing my kids to the library because they do so much more than just take out books. I mean, they, they're able to get books, but they're able to get like crafting supplies like yeah, that gonna... they can take and um, different activities for the kids that they hold every month. I'm sure that you're going to talk about that, yeah. but it's, it, you know, as I get older, it's, it's interesting to see what the library meant for me uh, as opposed to my kids. And I see yeah. Lillian saying the, li the Libby app. That's uh, yeah, I actually yeah. have that on my phone as well. Um, we did an event at the Kingston Library. Uh, we've done it for a few years. It was Chalk the Walk, um, literally doing chalk artwork outside the gates of the library where people would get a section of the chalk, um, of, a, of the sidewalk to make artwork. Um, I had a child show me her ID, fingers as air quotes, which was her library card. And the only other thing in her little wallet besides a couple of coins was a library card and a fake credit card. So um, she, she was sporting her first idea. Library cards, for the most part, are sometimes your very first form of identification. So um, let's advance one more so slide. The state is divided by library systems. A, collect a collaborative resource for local libraries is to share their resources, their supplies, and contribute to the huge online public access catalog, OPEX, um, which is created by the library system within New York State. I'm sharing this map since we're from all over the state. And I want you to know from each city, every tiny community, there's a library ready to serve you and the families that we work with. Thank you for being so interactive. All right, so the link below, um, nysl.nyse.gov will bring you into more library resources. And that specific link will take you to the same page that has this map. You can, it's interactive. So you could click on the map that will bring your region in play. And then from there, you can drill down to the libraries that are in your community. Although I'm sure everyone on the call already knows what, where their local library is located. Um, show of virtual hands, how many of you have a library card? And what do you like to check out? I know Lillian does uh, Libby. Uh, let's advance the next slide. <clears throat> Within the Hudson Valley, 
uh, we're part of the Mid-Hudson Library System. And with a library card, in addition to being able to check out the standard um, expectation of books, which historically everyone got a library card for, there's a huge amount of additional services that are provided. Fun fact, libraries love to collaborate, as you can see, obviously with other libraries, but also with other organizations and entities. So for example, within our program in Dutchess County, we've developed a wonderful relationship with the Pleasant Valley Library for our monthly wrap family dinner meeting. A library is a great space to provide your own programming. It's obviously easy to access. There's parking, they have multimedia resources, restrooms, children and teen spaces, and a whole lot more. The Millerton Library here in Dutchess County also um, has uh, made sure the space is fully accessible and all libraries are making those adjustments in order to be able to provide for anyone's level of ability uh, and, and physical ability. So there's been a huge push within New York State, Kingston Library is one of them, um, to update the architecture so that we're meeting the needs of, of anyone coming into that library. Um, there's listening devices, translation devices, as well as um, elevators and other uh, easy access for uh, any patron coming in. And when we think of these libraries as repositories of books, um, and literacy, which will always be part of library mission. Let's advance one more slide. There is a host of other resources, and this is really the meat and potatoes of our conversation. So our my example is the Mid-Hudson Library System, which services Columbia, Dutchess, Green, Putnam, and Ulster counties. Um, they provide electronic or e-books and magazines online. Um, with your library card, you also have access to online courses at the collegiate level, hobby instructing, uh, tutoring, uh, learning a language, whether it be another language or ESL services, and other electronic resources as well. They really make sure um, that they have that available for any level. Uh, and then there's also the library specific resources, and that drills down a little bit to making sure that our community libraries are serving the patrons within their space. So Kingston Library offers different resources than say um, another library outside of Ulster County, I can't think of any. Um, so we provide streaming services and what we're seeing is a lot of pushback and regarding eliminating some bills. So uh, many of our community have eliminated cable services or um, streaming services like Hulu and Netflix because they're trying to trim back their budgets. Um, being able to have free movie or video streaming services, genealogy services, which can be quite expensive. Um, we're seeing more and more popularity around genealogy, so that's available. Academic resources, we have um, we've partnered with Bard College to provide some, some um, classes as well, uh, which is a, a free service for working on a, some specific degrees and also some math classes at our library. So we try and provide academic resources. Also, libraries serve as uh, testing moderators. So if for uh, students that are homeschooled or they are required to take tests and they're testing or uh, going to online colleges, um, libraries can moderate and um, proctor tests. Uh, employment, it's a huge part of the services that a lot of libraries provide. Resume writing, whether it be with someone who comes in to assist, evaluate, or online uh, assistance tools, practice interviews, job sources, um, looking for job placement, online job fairs. This is something that has been growing for uh, providing for patrons. Local history collections and Kingston is the, the county seat for Ulster County as well as a lot of historic information. So those collections that have been collected since the beginning of the founding of Kingston are now all electronic. So instead of the microfiche days, we have now have everything online for people to research. There's also something called the Library of Things. So, um, and many libraries have this now. So someone had mentioned um, being able to get books and DVDs. We also have, uh, oh, there's still a CD player out there. That's awesome to hear. Um, so we have one for summer garden uh, yard games for um, being able to, you can check out playing badminton or volleyball. We also uh, have 
equipment like projectors, gardening tools, so that people can actually check out these pieces of resources to use. And it's definitely not a book, but also providing for the needs of our community. Uh, in addition to the library of things, we have hotspots. It really became quite uh, prevalent. And as a president of the library, uh, the Friends Group, uh, we've actually funded and we're putting in place a number of hotspot rentals. So we saw this in the city of Kingston, especially during COVID. Schools sent home Chromebooks for students to use, but a lot of those homes didn't have Wi-Fi services. So boom, we can now provide a service by checking out a hotspot for 30 days. And that's for free to our patrons for families who might not have Wi-Fi in another way. Um, on-site classes, someone had referred to that earlier. We have a, such a diversity within um, our classes. So in addition to obviously the monthly book club, there's uh, crafts, knitting, uh, uh, astronomy. Uh, we've, had a, we've had a Lego program uh, come on and off. Uh, children's programs are huge. So we offer, and um, we also fund something called the Super Saturdays, where once a month we have uh, for our children and the parents and adults that bring them, um, either a presentation, we've had uh, Hudson Valley Raptors, we've had music troops, concerts, puppet shows, uh, you name it, we have brought that into the building for people to share and experience. Crafts and hobbies are huge, especially if you have uh, tools and resources around them um, that might become kind of expensive or something that can be swapped. Uh, we, we definitely have classes and availability for that. That's also part of our library of things. We offer space and actually we've just pan Kingston Library just passed a bond vote so that we're able to have some architectural changes to our historic building so that we'll be able to open up our community space for rental or community availability without opening up the full library. Many libraries are shifting to avoid uh, to provide more community space and diverse community space. So classes can come in, maybe someone is providing a, a Zumba class and then later on in the day, um, they have someone come in and do uh, club information like a Doctor Who club, which we also have had. Uh, trips and outings, many libraries like to plan that. So it might be something for seniors going down and and trying their luck at, um, at some sort of event or shopping trips. Uh, also for places that can, families might not be able to afford or have the ability to transport themselves like a, a zoo or an aquarium or other um, type of locations. And most of the time, friends groups try and offset the cost for that. So if it costs a bit to get down to, say, the um, the Bronx Zoo, uh, that community groups are like ours are trying to fund that. So it's a free or discounted event for a family to be able to do and so much more. Uh, libraries, again, answer the call of what their patrons are asking for. So within each library, their staff, boards and friends friends groups answer that call of what their community needs. These resources are most commonly free opportunities that families like ours can benefit from. And there's always an awareness to provide valuable but free or low cost diverse programming that answers the question, what resources do our patrons require? So much of the time, programming of the children's libraries will also incorporate an adult piece, either having a caregiver involved directly, like I was sharing with our Super Saturdays, or running an adult program in tandem. And when I say programming, I'm talking about our classes, the crafting, activities, work groups, demonstrations, performances, and social functions. So much happens at the local library for children, teens, adults, parents, caregivers, anyone who's part of our community. So in the chat, I'm just curious to see um, if, if you know of any of these resources or you've used any of these resources within your local library. It could be a yes, no, or you can either, um, I think there might even be the thumbs up or raise hand feature. <clears throat> is this something that is new for you guys to hear? Oh, oh, yes, yes, it's true. There is a lot that's going on. Um, yeah. We have historically, and there's always this idea that uh, libraries are for books, but 
there has been this huge cultural shift within the state, which was really reinforced during COVID, that we need to be able to provide for our patrons and the people that are within our community anything that they require uh, to really enhance their quality of life. And that is across the board something that Nyla and the friends groups are working on. So our libraries are living entities and they reflect our communities. If there's an opportunity that you don't find in your library, ask. Librarians love to research and they're always looking to meet the needs of their patrons. I think that might be the last slide. Can we just advance one more? Sure. Yeah. Awesome. So, yes. So we've reached <laughs> the question phase and, and more of it, I think, is is uh, just being able to hear that folks already know the people on the call already know that they're using their library for themselves. But it really has become the opportunity for this um, relationship building within your library and your community. So for my children who have grown up in the library for um, a, a huge set of my own uh, friend group. It's because of those relationships I built with the volunteering in the library and active in the in the library. A lot of the board members that I have worked with throughout the Mid Hudson Library System started because of their children, their love of it, or because that was a great spot for young mothers to bring their children. They got to do activities, uh, had no idea about the hot spots. Not all libraries have them, but it is awesome. And Mohawk hiking passes and fishing supplies still available to take out locally. Um, absolutely. That's a great point, Lillian. You are like my co-presenter. Uh, we definitely did try within the Kingston Library, and we're also kind of piggybacking through other libraries in our county of Ulster. But I can tell you in Dutchess County as well, the executive directors of each and every library meet regularly to be able to swap ideas or share resources. So if something's working at the bottom of Dutchess County in Beacon, uh, maybe with programming that I have seen at the top of, of, the, of the county, say in, in Millerton, where they're sharing those ideas or resources. The other thing is that libraries, um, these, these systems are set up. So you may know that if you don't get your book, if you don't find the book that you need in the library, that within 24 hours, that system somewhere has it and will get it to you. It's pretty as fast as Amazon in some cases, but that sharing of resources also um, is, is part of why there's such an interactivity of it because we're sharing in a way that um, makes sure that coverage areas are wider. And those smaller community libraries that are out and maybe 20 minutes from a, a place where they can buy groceries or do other entertaining really becomes the primary focal point for a community um, other than a school or maybe a faith-based organization. And so they really have their hands on the pulse of, of uh, what's going on, what is needed and making sure it's disseminated. Um, like I was saying, Millerton Library in Dutchess County, ha their friends group had set up a, a food pantry. So in addition to having a book sale, they also have this resource for people to come in and pick up foodstuffs or basic toiletries because there is a transportation issue for a number of people that live in that community. It has nothing to do with books, but it really is answering the call necessary uh, for members of their community. Any other questions? Well, I, I did see a question about uh, the local library. Um, are Mohonk hiking passes and fishing supplies still available locally? Do you happen to know that? Um, I know we had hiking passes. I'm not sure if they're still in place, but um, I'll definitely make sure that I'll find that out and I can double back. Um, just so you know, the best way to reach me is through the, the ccedutchess.org website. That's Cornell Cooperative Extension Duchess. So ccedutchess.org, you'll be able to find me there. If you have any other questions regarding um, using the library system, if you want some assistance in getting in reach with someone locally for you, I'm happy to do that. But that it will also take you to, um, to show what we do in Duchess County for our, our RAP families. Heather, thank you so much for joining us today. This was really helpful. Um, I, I learned some things about my local library that I had no idea, um, you know, and as a, a parent and adult learner, I'm happy to put those into play. Um, and I'm hopeful that some of the professionals and kinship caregivers on the call see things that can be useful. Um, you know, I know with the weather getting cooler, it's 
sometimes hard to entertain the kids. And I think that this is really, really helpful to know that there are so many resources that are available to us through the library system. So absolutely. And I, I welcome the idea for anyone to reach out to me, but just check social media. Um, libraries are really savvy and they make sure their events, their activities and promoting uh, what they're doing is, is right there already. So you might want to follow that as well uh, to find out your local library and what they're doing today, especially um, for the families that we serve. So yeah. thank you so much for the opportunity to brag about um, libraries. Yeah, and I'm so glad that there's it. a common sentiment. Yep, absolutely. Thank you again. Much appreciated, everyone on the call. Thank you for joining us. Uh, this video will be available starting tomorrow, as well as the handout uh, PowerPoint from today. And we will see you next month for Kinship Caregivers in Mahaney. Have a great day.